Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and I'm excited about this message tonight, uh, Kingdom Against Kingdom. And I know you guys are going to be saying, Brother Steve, you have, you have talked about this how many times now, Matthew 24? It seems like this is a every month or every couple of months type of message. Well, you know, you always learn something new. And uh, believe it or not, we're going to go to the book of Acts chapter 1. Not even Acts chapter 2. Well, we were going to go to chapter 2 as well. Acts chapter 1 here. Uh, we're going to look at this kingdom against kingdom. And now you're going to discover what that kingdom really is. Yeah. Wow. We're going to find out exactly the truth of what's really going on over here in Matthew 24. It's not what I thought. Uh, I will tell you, I've wondered about this kingdom against kingdom for a long time. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Really? Well, put on your seatbelt. We're going to be going several places, and I hope it will open up your eyes as well. All right, let's first jump back over here to the book of Acts chapter 1. For John truly baptized water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Okay, now what's he talking about right there? Some about the house of Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, he's talking about the kingdom being reestablished. All right, they ask the question, when, are they, when is he going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said it's not, he said, you know, it is... Not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But then he says, you shall receive power. He's going to put it in his own power. God's going to, the Father's going to put it in his own power. And he says, you're going to receive it after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So now we know when it will be. The kingdom would be restored to Israel when the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon them. And you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. When we had spoken these things, they beheld he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. All right, so when they would receive the Holy Spirit, this, is, this would be when the kingdom is restored to Israel. Was that true? Acts chapter 2. Yes, it was. What did we read here? Right Now we already know in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was poured out at the beginning of the chapter. Suddenly came a sound from heaven as a rush and mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. This, by the way, friends, in, on the day of Pentecost, 120 in the upper room was the house of Judah. The kingdom of Judah, in other words. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Now notice, it appeared. In other words, they could see this fire that looked like a tongue. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What do you know? The Holy Spirit has come. They've been given this to them. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. By the way, that word Jews in the Greek is Judeans. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? So they are Judeans by blood, not by birth. They were not born in Israel. Where were they born at? 
They were born Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, all the way down, Rome, you name it, Arabians, Cretes, Middle East, Europe, you name it, that's where they were from. But they were there in Israel. Some of them were mocking others, saying these men are new, full of new wine. Talking about the 120. But as they go on down, Peter's the one that stands up, becomes a spokesman, tells them all about, he witnesses to them about Jesus Christ, how he was crucified, how he was slain, related to them the words of the prophets, David, speaking concerning him, for I first saw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, and moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Then he goes on, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. And then we get on down here to verse 36, and this is where it all comes in. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Who do you say it to? House of Israel. Remember when Jesus sent them out abroad to the apostles? He said, go only into the way of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, in the way of the Gentiles do not go. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What did it say over here in Acts chapter 1? They asked the question, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The kingdom. And Jesus said to him, It wasn't for them to know the times of the seasons, which the Father had put in his own power. But he but what did he do? He gave you the clue. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the uttermost parts of the earth. What restores the kingdom to Israel is when the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon them. Why do you think Paul said to the Gentiles, he that is a Jew outwardly is not a Jew, but the one that is a Jew inwardly. So he come over here, we get down here. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. What can they do, they said. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost is what brings, restores the kingdom. For the promises unto you, to your children, to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So as long as the Holy Spirit is still being poured out, then the kingdom of Israel is still being established to this day. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourself from this. Notice this one here. This is interesting. It, with many other words, he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Do you know what the word untoward is in, Greek, in the Greek language? I got it. We got to put this one here. Highlight it where you can really see it. Save yourself from what? The untoward generation. I got to show you this. I got curious. I'm not so good with all my, my definitions of words, right? So I looked it up. What is an untoward generation? It is a warped, winding, crooked generation. Sounds like a bunch of snakes to me, doesn't it to you? That untoward generation was a, no doubt, a catchphrase that Peter used to let you know, save yourself from the snake generation, the viper generation. Jesus already blasted it. Why not, right? 
Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, here we go again, right? This is in Matthew chapter 12. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Now, we're reading this for a reason, friends, because we're going to get to Matthew 24 in a minute about kingdom against kingdom. Okay? Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Now, the Hebrew Matthew really brings it out better. He said, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Now, let me look, let's, let me show you the Hebrew Matthew, because that's a little confusing, verse 27, in the English version here. If you go to verse 27, he says here, I'll start with verse 26. If Satan cast out another Satan, there will be a division among them. How will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why do your sons not cast them out? See, that was the real issue. It wasn't that they could. It was the fact that they couldn't cast them out. Which only makes sense because remember, even as apostles came to him at one point, and it wasn't that they couldn't cast out devils because we know in another scripture there, they came back rejoicing and said, even the devils are subject unto us. But on one particular case, it was very hard that they couldn't cast out. Obviously, it seemed like more like an epileptic type of case. They said, Lord, we couldn't, why couldn't we cast him out? He said, this kind goes out only by prayer and fasting, right? But in this case here, he says, but I... But he says here, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why do your sons not cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. In other words, the mere fact these Pharisees couldn't cast them out is because as he had already identified them, you are of your father the devil and the works that your father does, you'll do also. That's what he already said about them, right? He says, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, truly the end of his kingdom has come. Whoa. It's a battle, friend. It is kingdom against kingdom. All right? Now you're going to start to see where, where Matthew 24 is going to go at. Nation shall rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. The battle's not over, friends. Those Noahide laws that Yana does so eloquently on, bringing that out on her channel over there on Odyssey. Kingdom against kingdom, the battle is not quite over. You're going to see that in a moment. So, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, truly the end of his kingdom has come. And it has. It's coming. All right? So, we see that. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. That's right. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So now that the Holy Spirit has come and filled the house of Israel and filled the Gentiles with the Holy Spirit, speak a word against that. It's over. Either make the tree good, his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. You're not going to get good oranges off of a snake tree, are you? And the Sephirot tree, the Kabbalah tree, is winding up with a serpent right through the middle of that Sephirot tree. 
Oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I want to read that one to you from the Hebrew Matthew. That's another interesting one, right? Family of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? Surely the mouth awakens, the heart speaks. A good man from the treasures of good heart brings forth good. And an evil man from the treasures of an evil heart brings forth evil. You remember these messages I've been driving home to you about, you know, when your mind is full of Christ, it opens up the treasures of heaven. Where your heart is, there will your treasures be, right? So when your heart, when it speaks of the heart there, it's speaking about the meditation of your heart. Those things that you're constantly thinking of, it opens up the windows of heaven that you cannot even contain, as it says in Malachi. Of course, that's speaking about a different issue, but still, I talk to you about this as the scripture says, where the heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be, right? Evil man from treasures, let's see, a good man from the treasure of a good heart brings forth good. Why? Because his mind is on Christ day and night. And when your mind is like that, you bring forth good. But if your mind is on the evil constantly, it's going it, to, yeah, they'll have all kinds of supernatural things happen, but it's going to be in an evil way. Oh, gosh. Hmm. Let's move on. Now let's see. I've also got here Matthew chapter 21. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? All right, let's back up here. But last of all, he said, oh, this is where we talk about the vineyard. They go in there and you got this evil guy there, right? Running the vineyard. And the husband took his servants and they beat one, killed the other. Talking about the, the servants that come to, to gather up the fruit from the vineyard. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and they did unto them likewise. He's talking about the prophets is what he's talking about. We know this. We know that Jesus tells us what the parable speaks about. But last of all, he sent unto his, to them his son saying, they will reverence my son. But when the husband saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Let us seize on his inheritance. You can't, you can't seize an inheritance like that because the life that was in him will only come back upon a believer. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord therefore the vineyard come, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Now the Pharisees, the Pharisees answer him, right? They say unto him, he will be miserably destroyed, those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their season. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scripture the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. What did Matthew 24 say? Look at it again. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What does he say right here? Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. Given to the Gentiles, the Goy. Whoa, you didn't know that, huh? Let's look at that. Let me take you over to Matthew 21 in the Hebrew and let's look at it over there. And we're getting close to closing here in just a moment here. We're trying to get ready here down in Florida to head back to home sweet home in Tennessee. Yeah, it's funny. We say home sweet home. I mean, we're all born down this area here, this neck of the woods, but Tennessee has just really become home. We call Florida the miserable state. That's because it's a dead gum hot here, right? Anyway, all right. 
So we're going to go back here. Let's see. We are actually, sorry, wrong chapter. We are, we're going to be right around verse 43. Make sure I get it down to the right spot there. Finally, I sent this. Okay. Okay. So they took him, cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the Lord of the vineyard comes, what will he do to them? They answered him saying, as for the wicked, he will destroy them and misery in his vineyard. He will give to other workers who will immediately give him the portion of his produce. Jesus said to them, have you not read the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was from the Lord. It is a, it is a marvel in our eyes. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of heaven will be torn from you and given to a nation producing fruits. Okay, that is verse 43 right here. And there it is right there. All right. Shem, okay. Melachot Shemaim, the kingdom of heaven. Me'alechem, uh, from unto you, ve'natat, uh, ve excuse me, ve tanatan will be given, it will be given to you, la goy, see, the goyim, the Gentiles, o se pari, and they will do the work, they will, they will, their works will produce fruits, is literally what it says, o se, o se pari, they will have the fruits that produce works there, and then it goes on to say, he who falls upon this stone will be cast down. He who fall and excuse me, he who falls upon it will be broken apart. The chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables and understood that he was speaking in regard to them. They sought to kill him, but they feared the crowds to whom he was a prophet. They sought to kill him. They wanted to kill Jesus. Couldn't stand. Because of what he said. Now you're going to understand. This is why the battle's not over. I mean, you got to follow the continuity of what's being said here, and that's where we're at. So we're at the last part. You're going to share with you now, right? Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, "See ye not all these things?" Not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. A whole bunch of people are going to start saying that they're the anointed ones. That's what the word Christ means, Mashiach, anointed ones. And they're going to deceive a lot of people. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see so you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. This verse 7, all right. This is what just changed everything for me. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. Let's, let's read that real quick. Just that verse there in, in, in the Hebrew language there in the seventh verse. All right, let me take you over here. Ve'yakum goy al goy. And it will rise up goim, Gentiles, upon Gentiles. Ve'melecha al melecha ve'yahi mehamot robot. Okay? So you have nation will rise up against nation and Melecho, Melecha, excuse me, Al Melecha and kingdom against kingdom. Remember Jesus said he was going to take from the Pharisees and he was going to give the kingdom over to the Gentiles. 
the Gentiles become part of that nation. In other words, they become grafted in to the vine. They become part of Israel. The kingdom is there. The nation against nation and the kingdom against kingdom. In the last days, what you have is a battle between Christians that are the Gentiles that are Christians. They're fighting against one another. And those that have been grafted into the vine, the nation rising up against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, is the Pharisaic dynasty is still warring against the genuine believers filled with the Holy Spirit. And the nation against nation, that's just Gentiles that, in my opinion, they probably just have not even got the Holy Spirit yet, but yet they claim the name of Christianity. And they fight against each other. The Baptists, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, the Presbyterians, they're all fighting against each other. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. That's not even, I mean, look, the wars and rumors of wars is what was in the verse above when it talks about physical battles. But when it talks about nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, it's a spiritual war that has taken place. And remember, Jesus already told you up here that there's not going to be one stone left upon another. Remember that the, the, the one parable that Jesus speaks about where he talks about, you know, if you, if, you know, you, in order to be able to, uh, take a hold of that, that, that man's house. You have to bind him first. Huh. There you go. Right? So anyway, we'll do it over here so you can see it easier. Now now watch what happens. This is how you know that it's speaking of this. It's this kingdom against kingdom and nation against nation is literally, like I said, it's the Pharisees. It's, it's, it's the Pharisees of today from 2,000 years ago that are angry over the destruction of the second temple that because they, they were doing their false demonic worship was going on. Do you think God would have let the temple be destroyed if it was some righteous thing that was happening back 2,000 years ago? No, sir, he would not have. Jesus overthrew the tables and he says, you have turned my father's house into a den of thieves. He said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a bunch of, a den of thieves. Who was it? The Pharisees. When the veil was rent, we find out as I shared with you a little while back, the ungodliness that was revealed that was going on in behind the veil. So they're still bitter and angry. That's why they've got, by the way, that's why they're doing all these books about Christianity and saying, you guys don't really understand Jesus unless you have it from a Jewish perspective. So now we have all these Jewish authors that never knew anything about Hebrew in the first place. You know, that maybe they've learned modern Hebrew or whatever the case, and you know, but now they're going to tell you about who Jesus really was. See? Deception. Evilness. Coming in. That nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom is very subtle. Watch what he says. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. In other words, those that really believe the name of Jesus Christ. Remember what happened when, when Jesus even dare, when Pilate said, you know, who are you? You know, or, or I'm sorry, uh, Caiaphas asked him, you know, I adjure you by the name of the living God. Tell us who you are. Are you the son of God? He said, thou sayest. He didn't even say he was the son of God. He said, thou sayest. And Pilate ripped his clothes and says, you've heard his blasphemy. He claims to be the son of God. But do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? That's a Noahide law of violation. Off with your head then, my friend. Kingdom against kingdom. Vengeance is here. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, right? You shall be hated of all nations. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. They're offended. Why? Because if you say anything against Israel, you know, oh my God, you're saying something against the Jewish people. Oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Zionism, Zionism. We got to have the law. And yet the whole New Testament clearly 
trying to get you to recognize the law of Christ is the law of life. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, your heart, and your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Everything hung on those two. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. It didn't say a few, friends. It said many will arise. Isn't it interesting? Generally, prophets come out of Israel. Oh, wow. Didn't know that, huh? I don't know right off the top of my head if we ever had a Gentile prophet. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So where's the deception going to come from? You got it. From the kingdom in the Middle East there. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, shall, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And they, then shall the end come. This gospel. In part what you're hearing now. I say in part because I'm nobody special. Talk about what the two witnesses will preach. Now we're getting in the right area. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. We don't need to go to the rest of it for now. I just wanted to be able to share that with you. And let me just quickly share also with you here from Corinthians as well. All right? If after the manner of men I have fought with beast at Ephesus. I thought that was interesting. Paul said he fought with beast at Ephesus. I, I looked it up. I mean, it's, it's beast. But he talk, I don't think he's talking about animals. I think he's talking about human animals. What advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? With what body do they come? Thou fool, thou that which sowest is not quickened except it die. I'm trying to remember why I put this in here. Let me just see real quick. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's because of what we have here. Let me just quickly go through this a little bit with you. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ not be risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith all is also in vain. Yea, if we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. And he's just saying speculation-wise, right? So be that the dead rise not. Let's move down to verse 19. If this, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. And we know that that's not true. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man come, came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as Adam all die, even so Christ shall be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are in Christ at his coming. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God to even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Remember when we say that the scripture says we rule and reign with Christ, we talk about the quote unquote millennial reign. There it is right there. He is ruling and reigning even now until he puts all enemies under his feet. That last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he has accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I want to just share that with you there. We have not quite come to that complete end. 
And when we do, though, then he's going to deliver up the kingdom of God even to the Father. So when that last soul has believed and filled with the Holy Spirit, whether they be Jew or Gentile, either one, we're going home. I'm Steve Benoon. I hope this blesses your heart. Uh, and I really, I, I want to thank so many of you. You guys have been so kind in your responses and uh, requesting us speak more on these matters like this. And so that's why I'm doing it. And I thank you for your support. Uh, believe me, it, without your help, we just can't do it. We can't make it. And especially those of you that are helping in the case of my uh, father-in-law as well. Uh, I, I said to you that has been very devastating uh, for us, and, and it has. But, uh, you know, some of you have really been stepping up and helping us in, in just an amazing way. Um, and so we, I want to thank you personally for, from the bottom of my heart for that as well. Uh, we are, he is listening. We have, uh, you can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. I hope it's still up. I know we get attacked all the time, uh, but uh, Jamie, our webmaster guy, amazing guy, does amazing work for us to keep us up and going. Definitely watch that interview there. Truth comes with a price. Uh, Donald right there, we really appreciate him uh, coming on there, uh, sharing information with us there, and I think you'll find it very fascinating as well. God bless.